Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here at HPE Discover 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with my co-host Dave Vellante. We started this CUBE 14 years ago. We've been to every HP and HPE Discover and we're here with Antonio Nier, President and CEO, CUBE alumni, friend of theCUBE. The, the man about town right now with the most impressive keynote in the history of, uh, of business with the Sphere. Antonio, great to see you. Thank That's you. your new living room as you said. <laughs> it's good. quite impressive. Thanks for well, coming on theCUBE, again, well, as usual. Good morning to both of you, and yeah. thank you for covering Discover for so many years. And I'm glad you were able to experience that uh, magic moment at the Sphere. You know, what's really magical is just the, the transformation both of HPE and also the industry, and Dave and I were talking yesterday on the keynote analysis uh, from, from your keynote in the show was, besides the, the, the pomp and circumstance of a great the Sphere, the first ever event, corporate event there, keynote, was, the timing of this market's a systems revolution, and the DNA of HP and HPE has just been all about systems. Um, hardware, software, uh, supercomputing with Cray, and then you also do a power servers too, so it's not like it's new. So this whole wave is now about hardware for the generative AI era, and a lot of people want Gen AI, but they need the infrastructure to do it, and it's been one of the things we've been reporting on. This has been a big talk, and of course, Jensen Wong was on stage with you announcing the huge NVIDIA partnership, which by the way, he was on for 25 minutes, the longest <laughs> of any keynote we've seen. We've seen all his keynotes this year. Uh, with, with, with the exception the of GTC, obviously, but partner keynotes. But that's so his own partner keynotes. Yeah, yeah. the keynote, he yeah. dominated GTC. <laughs> but his, his whole platform shift is legit. I mean, you got tokens, you got vectors. A new kind of fabric is developing digital where codification of enterprises is happening. And this is just the perfect marriage between you guys in terms of the experience. You got great go to market, you got great sales and service, his, historic. They bring that AI system combined with HP. It's been the big story. Tell yeah. us your thoughts on this and how it all came together and how it, how it just clicked. Yeah, well, it's not a coincidence. I mean, uh, we have been working on our AI strategy for a long time. Let's remind ourselves that the HPE has been in the AI business for more than two decades. It just was focused on very few customers, those who were using supercomputers to do simulation and modeling and AI at scale. But obviously two years ago, we achieved a major breakthrough with the generative AI, and now the question is how we use it to basically what I, th I think it is the next industrial revolution, which is going to be all driven by AI. And so with Jensen, we spent a lot of time since last year talking about the customer requirements, what it means. And when I think customer segmentation, I think about three segments. I think about the early in the life cycle, which are the model builders and the hyperscalers and the cloud providers of sorts. They require a lot of computational power to train these models. But then, when you go to enterprises, it's all about the experience. And yesterday, the announcement was all about the experience. And then, in an AI application driven approach, how we bring it all in an experience that you can deploy from the tools you know, the cloud operating model, and make it all look one integrated offer. In fact, the solutions we announced yesterday is one product number, all of it. The software, the infrastructure, the services, the integrated with HP GreenLake platform is one product number. That's yeah. the key. And, and this is, so I want to go just touch on the keynote again for a minute because you said big moments require big venues. So, you know, well done, you know, the venue was big. And then the other thing I really loved is you brought Bill and Dave into the conversation, sort of an homage to, the, to those two. Everything has led us to this moment today. So, again, that really resonated. And then the, the third thing was Gen AI as a distributed workload. When you said that, I yelled out, yes! <laughs> Absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. Because that brings new challenges. And then, of course, the two, the two big announcements, the NVIDIA you know, of AI computing with HPE and the HPE private cloud for AI. Yeah. Um, and, and the last thing I, I want to get your reaction on, because this was not easy for you to pull together, and you just mentioned it, one integrated solution. It's not just a bunch of, it's not just servers and compute and, and, and storage. It's an integrated solution, and today customers need solutions. So, when you speak to customers, what are they asking you? Why did it lead you to this solutions orientation as opposed to the speeds and feeds? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm always proud to represent Hewlett Packard brand in the Hewlett Packard enterprise. We cannot forget our roots, and this company has changed the world in so profound ways. When you go back 80 years ago, whether it was transforming the uh, movie industry with the audio oscillator, whether it was the uh, finance and engineering with the calculator, and even participating in putting a man on the moon with the Apollo mission. So we have transformed many, many times, 
the, the world, and generative AI has the opportunity to transform the world again. But when it comes down to AI, in particular the customers we serve the most, um, it's, they tell us, you know, it's very complex, it's very difficult, and at the same time it's a huge investment. So they need expertise, they need the simplicity of deployment, and they need to prove the return on investment on that step that they're taking. And so what we did yesterday with Jensen is to deliver the amazing innovation that he has with the amazing innovation HP has in one integrated experience and leverage that unified platform called HP Green Lake to deploy, by the way, is three clicks and I counted because I did the demo, 24 seconds to deploy an AI application. It's not a framework, it's not a bunch of tools that you have to stitch together. It is a solution with three clicks and 24 seconds, you deploy and you're up and running. Whether it's inferencing, whether it's a RAG, the retrieval augmented generation, whether it's a fine tuning model, or whether it's a small training model, because large enterprises are Few of them are going to create. Uh, they're going to create a large language. Yeah, it's not a reference architecture. You got the T-shirt sizes, which I loved. No. no. Yeah, I mean the thing about it is that 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 you set up there. We're going to have everyone trained. I mean, you basically burned the boat. You told your employees. You told your customers. <laughs> we're going to be trained up. We're going to be doing this. I think you get a lot of benefit to Nvidia. You bring the enterprise to them. They bring AI to you. So I see a great fit there. So uh, I'll check. The next question is on the go to market. How do you see that playing out? Because I see customers eating this up big time because you can just deploy the racks. They're used to doing that, but it's an AI system. Um, it's got a supercomputing flair to it because the entire platform revolution has a supercomputing for the masses for the new generation, not just the niche. Right. It's supercomputing is now the standard, which you guys have been doing, NVIDIA's been promoting it. So talk about how you're going to go to market with customers. Are you going to sell together? Because I think this is a unique partnership that you bring to NVIDIA. They bring the AI system we'll bring and it together. So I talk think, about uh, the go-to-market specifically. So first of all, uh, from a go-to-market perspective, we're going to show up as a one company, not two companies in front of a customer. We're going to show up as a one company selling the same thing. Whether they are leading in their engagement or we are leading, we're going to show up as a one company. And both com companies are going to get paid the same way. So that's obviously it's very important, <laughs> right? Uh, we're going to train, and we are already training, we already started 90 days ago, training yeah. thousands of our people uh, because of our reach, right? Which obviously Jensen and team fully appreciate, but it's also backed by the partnership we have had for so many years, in fact, more than a decade, and you can see here on the floor some of the systems we are deploying today yeah. at the supercomputer level, and then next to that you have these generative AI systems, which include the private cloud AI, and also what comes next, which obviously is the Blackwood generation, yeah. that we're going to integrate into the same offer. A couple of years ago, Dave and I were, uh, saw that AI and HPC were going to converge, HPC, high performance computing, which is supercomputing, basically, and we went and started covering supercomputing event three years ago, this will be our fourth year with theCUBE there, and it's now an AI show. And, and I want to ask you specifically, because the platform shift around tokens and vectorization is a computational revolution as well, but it's a supercomputing human interaction going on. And you mentioned transformation. HPC used to solve problems for Boeing, hardcore problems, big, big problems, big hairy problems. Yeah. Now that's going to come to the data center. So what do you anticipate that doing for your customers? What are some of the things that they're going to start biting off and chewing on, deploying? Because now you're going to take that unique, I won't say niche, I mean, that's my word, but like HPC now with AI is supercomputing. That's now available for the data center. What do you guys see as that solution? What are you guys going to be talking about? What are some of those enterprise transformational use cases? I think that's it, you said it right at the end. Is the use cases, right? To go some of the uh, demos here whether it's computer vision, manufacturing, robotics, whether it's conversational AI, whether it is uh, you know, standard chat bots and the like. So each of these use cases require a type of infrastructure that delivers that token, which ultimately is the value for processing data. But to me it's about, as, as we discussed with Jensen yesterday, how we converse with the data. <laughs> and ultimately data is the key here, because the large language models have proven to be mature, 
but you have to train yep. those models with your data and make sure you provide the right guardrails around it. And you yep. and I were talking about it when you were asking Antonio yep. Neely yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <your> questions. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave always talks on theCUBE about the laws of physics. Yeah. And you got a lot of physics going on, that's going to be a limitation, but now you got these packaging solutions with chips and, and Ethernet and all that, the new packaging around uh, the computation side. You brought up data. If you look at the success of what's going on right now in generative AI, a lot of it's along the large language models, which is completely new stuff, but the classic blocking and tackling AI is companies like Databricks, Snowflake. Databricks was born out of the Hadoop revolution, which then became Spark, and then they became the Data Lake. Now, people may or may not have forgotten, but you guys bought a company called MapR that yep. was born out of the Hadoop revolution, which that is the DNA of what the big data world was, now that's AI. How does MapR fit into that data layer? Because with the NVIDIA piece, you guys have a unique asset. Can you share, I mean, there's not a lot of marketing around MapR because it's probably already integrated. Well, Esmeral. Yeah, it's it's Esmeral. Yeah, so, take us through that Esmeral. impact. So, obviously, you need to prepare the data, and to prepare the data, you need to get to the data first. And so the HP Esmeral Data Fabric, which is at the core, the technology that came from the MapR, although was significantly enhanced, allows us to really bring that data into one place so we can prepare it. And so that data fabric is actually edge to cloud, so we can get access to the data in a compliance way, bring it to a place where we can prepare it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why the other acquisitions of Pachyderm helps because ultimately we do the data pipeline automation with it, yeah. and then we run through the AI enterprise software of NVIDIA and the NIM that comes on top of it so yeah. we can converse yeah. with that data. But all of that came together in this announcement yesterday. You don't have to bring these tools together. They are all part of the Workbench tool. Once you go to the Green Lake, you log in, you want to deploy this, they're all there for you. So, so that's already all integrated automated, in, in all the automated NVIDIA automated solution. Integrated. That, and, and that's the big message that I'm getting at, at Discover. And this again, was not easy. I mean, you had to probably knock some heads together to get the organization. Always. You know, <laughs> Remember, I don't think it's all, I think the engineering part, yes, is hard, but I don't think it's the hardest part, it's the culture. Yeah, well, um, I want to shift gears a little bit and, and talk for, about sort of some tactical things. You've made some great acquisitions, a lot of tuck-ins, a lot of, you know, a lot of wins. Uh, I think about the Athenet acquisition. Now that's, you know, bearing fruit with private 5G. Of course, the big one that we talked about at Mobile World Congress, Juniper, any updates there, any changes? Can you update us on the status and the likely close time yeah. and strategy? So we, are, we are on track, so remember, I made the announcement on January 9, we are here on June 19, so call it five and a half months. We are on track to close the transaction at the end of this calendar year, or beginning of calendar 2025. You probably read the news today about the UK, and it's because we filed now in the UK, and the UK have 60 days to review our filings, uh, and that ends on August 14, just coincidence, you know, just before the big holiday season. Yep. Uh, but we are very engaged with our regulators, and doesn't nothing gives us any pause to not stay on those timelines uh, I just provided. So we are very excited, I have to say, uh, the ability to close this in that time frame, and honestly, to bring that combination of innovation to our customers. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> The quarter, the earnings print last yeah. quarter, uh, very, very strong. Uh, compute AI servers really were the big tailwind. I think compute grew, I think it was 18%. Yep. Uh, I think you've, you raised your guidance. Uh, the street got very excited. Stock's been up you know, very nicely in the past 30 days. Um, of course, Tony Sakanagi, he always goes right for the jugular and the, on the calls, asking about the, the, the time frames, the lead times for H100s, which you acknowledged is, is, is com compressing, um, but you have enough visibility in the business. So we're seeing the AI trade, trade broaden beyond just NVIDIA and Broadcom and the big hyperscalers. You have really confidence in your business, enough to raise guidance, and who knows, maybe even you acknowledge on the call, maybe some conservatism. I don't expect you to restate guidance on the cube, but I wonder if you could, <laughs> no, could talk great. about your, <laughs> your, your, the momentum that you're seeing and what gave you that confidence to? Well, first of all, again, guidance. I'm very proud of the progress we made uh, last quarter. We had a very solid quarter. Not only we grew revenues uh, on the back of doubling, doubling the revenue quarter over quarter in the AI system space, uh, but also delivered a very solid performance on EPS, uh, which was on the, we exceeded EPS high end of the guidance, and very solid free cash flow. Like which, plus 600, I think. Plus 600, 625 million. 
And part is because we are super disciplined on how we approach not just AI, but the rest of the business, including prudent cost discipline. Um, you know, for me, <coughs> as I think about the rest of the year, we have, first of all, a significant backlog in the AI system space. Uh, our pipeline against the backlog, backlog is a multiples of the backlog. So our backlog is approximately three plus billion dollars, and our pipeline on the AI side is a multiple of that. And so that's why we are very confident. Uh, in addition to the fact that we expect a small recovery, a modest recovery in the networking side, which has done phenomenal for us, but obviously at the industry go to yeah. the digestion, we are following the traditional market curves, uh, although we have gained share, quite significant amount of share, but now we expect modest recovery and then enter 2025 with a different momentum in that business, and then hopefully we close the junior transaction so we can accelerate that momentum in a combined portfolio. Uh, that's why when I think about the, uh, the, the opportunity for 2025, it's not just AI, it is networking and GreenLake. Because one of the biggest opportunities we have with this introduction of the private cloud AI, I can go tomorrow, actually we started already, to the 34,000 customers already on the HP GreenLake platform and help them deploy AI with three clicks in 24 seconds because they are used to the HP GreenLake experience. That's it, and, that's great leverage. And you've got a, a potential storage momentum too, which a mix shift to storage means higher gross margins. Correct. And you're making money, if I could, if, it, it looks like you're making money on AI servers, unlike, unlike with Dell, you saw Dell's quarters, they grew like crazy, but, didn't, but their profit dropped, so well, you- Remember, we delivered 11% profit yes. uh, on the server side, which includes the AI system. Operating profit, Operating yes, profit, yeah. right. So, Okay, so that's, well done. Uh, so so the, the street calmed down a little bit because people thought, oh, only NVIDIA's going to make money in AI servers, not the case. Well, because we also disclosed through the, our earnings that how much services we start now accruing for future revenues. And that's the important piece. You know, there is a significant percentage of the AI systems we have shipped and booking right now that includes services. And that services is the fact that we actually not just sell the servers and storage for that matter, we actually build the entire generative AI cloud in a data center that we have designed and or picked and we run it. We run it for the customer. Yeah. And they are actually consuming it on a GPU per hour basis. And when you go to that model, you actually recognize the yeah. revenue of the servers up front, but then over time, you actually recognize the services revenue that fuels that operating margin over the next yeah. several and quarters. That gives you leverage, yeah. yeah. And you got a great business model, and you were on theCUBE when you announced GreenLake and these services, you stuck to the guns, you made that bet, it's paying off. Two questions to end out is here. What is the next bet? The big bet, obviously NVIDIA is a big part of that. And then two, what's the culture shift like for your team? What's your mandate? Take that hill, keep pushing the acceleration. Is it going to change your marketing strategy? Because here, it's cool and relevant now. The systems revolution's happening. Customers want an appetite for Gen AI. They got to solve privacy, their data estates, got to clean up a bit. But you got the service model. You got the Gen AI head tailwind. What's the priority bet you're making now for the next five years? And then what's the I culture like? I think networking, like? networking's going to be essential. This is why we did the, uh, we, we made the announcement of the acquisition of Juniper. When I think about this company going forward, think about GreenLake is the North Star, is how we deliver all these experiences across server, storage, networking, private cloud, all the SaaS software services you need, data protection and observability. One of the announcements we made here was the extension of observability with OpsRamp into the NVIDIA clusters, integration with yeah. CrowdStrike APIs to manage the endpoint security, yeah. uh, also the alternative on the virtualization side, because you have to look at our HP private cloud offer, not just as AI. We have HP private cloud for virtualization, containerization, workload optimization. We just added AI yeah. to it. <laughs> and all of them yeah. actually get delivered with the same experience yeah. Yeah. which is the HP Yeah, and You've been talking cloud core edge for a long time, so now you got a cloud data center edge, distributed computing, in a new clustered systems kind of package. That's the future. It is, it, it is basically customer need an integrated stack. 
whether you bring the stack yourself or you work with someone else or both, that's what we did yesterday. In many ways, yesterday, we accelerated the adoption of AI in enterprise, and for our channel partners, which we have 1,500 here, we made them re relevant, because for them, it was a little bit wait and see how this is going to evolve, where they can play and when, because they don't sell yeah. in the hyperscalers, yeah. and they were super happy, oh, now I can go sell this, I don't have to have huge amount of infrastructure, it's just one problem. Yeah, and they can wrap services around it, and add, other, exactly. add, add value around it. Final question, the last 30 seconds we have left. We're at your staff meeting right now. Tell us what the marching orders are for your staff. What do you, you execute, great, execute, <laughs> execute, <laughs> or be executed? Uh, no. no. I mean, you, I mean, no, you, got, you I, change your marketing. What changes now? Because this is this is a moment this in time. This is a problem, right? I think uh, everybody waiting for a change. <laughs> I think for this is my seven uh, year as a CEO doing yeah. uh, Discover. Our strategy has not changed since day one. We talk about the importance of the edge. We invested there. Yeah. We double down and look at the momentum we have with HP Aruba and hopefully with Juniper yeah. we're going to have double that momentum. We invested in Green Lake 2019. We have 34,000 customers. More than $15 billion in total contra value. Yeah. Now we're getting closer and closer to the two billion AIR, yeah. right? That's yeah. a significant progress but it's the experience that makes yeah. us unique and relevant. Yeah. And then, we believed in, in AI a long time ago when we acquired Cray. And Cray brought the crown jewels of doing AI at scale, <laughs> including a lot of patents and manufacturing, which we have one of the largest uh, manufacturing footprints in water cooling. Yeah. And as you know, with the next generation of NVIDIA GPUs, Blackwell, Rubin, and Vera, it's 100% direct liquid cooling. So when you go there, you can yeah. see how many yeah. direct liquid cooling we are doing for customers today. But to me, it's all about the focus on the customer, that's why this is a customer event. Yeah. Bring the partners with it, and execute, execute, execute. And Tony, I want to thank you from on behalf of Dave and I and the team for being part of the CUBE journey and supporting us. It's been fun to document um, with you and the team. It's been fun to watch. Thank you for all your support and congratulations. This is a great moment for the awareness around AI and brings the whole, th whole story yeah, together. Well done. And thank you for you guys and, and the CUBE for always being with us, not just here, but all around our events. And obviously we're going to see each yeah. other again yes. in Barcelona yeah, at the great. end of the year. Yeah. So great thank to have you. you. And Tony O'Neill here in theCUBE, breaking it down, sharing his vision, his perspective, observation certainly, and the big momentum continues with the systems revolution. It's happening here on theCUBE. We're bringing you all the data. Soon we'll bring our AI to the table. We'll have to get some Gen AI in here, Dave. We'll keep <laughs> it going. Thanks for watching. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Antonio O'Neill, CEO of HPE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>